For this short video, I want to talk about why I still plant seeds in a very organized manner, even though my general garden arrangement is a little bit more chaotic. And the answer is right in here. Let's take a look around real quick and we'll come back to that. There are some straight lines and there are some clusters. And then there's just some random sprinkling of things around. So yes. Even in a garden like this, my garden stops here. I do still plant seeds in a straight line. There's my nursery being helped out by the shade back here. So the example, I may have had the microphone covered again, goodness gracious. The example that I have finally coming up after three years of trying is really exciting. And that is, I want you to take a look and see that these are in a straight line. Now I know two years ago, I planted something called sea oats on the top end of this overwintering seeds bed. It's called stratification and most people do it in refrigerator bags and have a much better um, success rate than me, but I do it straight in the ground a lot of the times and I have a reasonable success rate. There's a hog peanut, or a hog nut. Here is the dogwood doll's eye, which is Ceres species. Um, Osier dogwood is another name. These grow up to have red stems, which you can kind of see now. One of them died, I think but the other one's quite alive, and they're about ready for transplant. We've got some milkweed popping up through, and I do try to keep this pretty well weeded as soon as I do recognize something. For example, I was finally 100% sure that this was just aster, and not something I intentionally planted in here for the overwinter seeding. And so that leaves me to believe that in this section of the garden where I had planted a bunch of Saskatoon seeds this year, what we have is last year's sea oats, an extremely rare plant that does need stratification and may not take very quickly. And that is what I believe this is simply due to the fact that it's in a straight line. Wouldn't you just think it was some weedy grass, right? So before too long, having finally succeeded with this plant, my goodness, I've tried five times on the same seeds. Um, the next step is going to be to pot them up and keep them good and safe until I can confirm that that is indeed what they are. It should be given that they're in a straight line, about where I remember planting seeds for it at some point, that ought to be what that is. Though I really can't guarantee. And that is a good portion of why I plant my seeds in a very organized manner. We'll talk about the evolution of that for a second. There was one year, it's especially important with plants that either are difficult to recognize in the seedling form or that you've not planted before and you don't know what the seedlings look like um, to either put them in a straight line or in their own little cluster um, down in here we can see some examples of that I didn't have well there we have it we have one amaranth came up I don't seem to have gotten any hollyhocks and I don't yet have any sea oats out of that. But here we have red buds. 
The next one we have Sumex, hopefully coming up sometime soon. But I've been finding they are more likely to come up in the wild. And so that's one method of seeding that I do is just have them on the top of a pot that then stays in a shaded protected area, nursery area. If not covered, they are likely to have the seeds taken by birds. So that's something to consider. And then in here, I have a few examples past this interesting plant that is called a vine peach, which I will eventually find out if that is synonymous with, um, uh, could be a cantaloupe, could be something else. I'm really not sure. It was a poorly labeled seed packet from years ago. So in here we have two different Saskatoons coming up and they were underneath one of my cut off, um, plastic jugs. Same thing here. And those are, do I have an example out and about? Here's one. So this is a Gatorade one, one of the more sizable. And the way that I take care of this for after planting the seeds and to keep the birds off is I just, let's pretend that sow thistle is what I'm trying to protect, but not damage the magnolia once i planted the seeds the soil is much looser and you just press it in really good until the edge of the jug is sunk into the ground and that's going to protect the seedlings inside i also planted a cluster of false indigo here and they're coming up well and then additionally i planted more sea oats over here and more Saskatoon right here, but I'm not seeing evidence of that starting to come up. I have three new Saskatoons coming up throughout the garden. Two of them are there, and these are a new species I brought from off-site that, that I poked and found in the brambles there. I've never had sweet magnolia on site, and the sea oats are ordered seeds. I do find that ordered seeds are a lot harder to get sprouted. It's best with native plants especially if you're picking them from their native and moving them to a location. It is best to take them completely fresh fruit and all and stick them in the ground. That's why I had such good success with that um, red osier dogwood which I call doll's eyes dogwood because the fruits are like that. Oh, we got a whole nother variety of Party glads happening here. Cool. My friend's uh, sweet grandfather shared them with her, but she didn't have a garden to put them in that year. So now I have all these different colors happening. They're, they're quite lovely. I'll have to send her more pictures. So sweet. Thanks, Rose. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's, um, that's why. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see if those are indeed what I suspect they are. So if you want to find out eventually too, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and we'll do more discussions like this.